Microsoft Word 2010 Resizing Parts of Tables. Let's start by looking at the heading of this table. We've got the heading here, Details of Houses, High School. It would be nice if this stretched across the width of the table. But we've got three different cells here at the moment. To make all of these cells one, we're going to merge our cells. This is when you combine more than one cell, row or column into one cell. To do this, highlight the section that you would like to merge. Then select the Layout tab on your ribbon and go to Merge Cells. This will make everything one cell. You can also choose to split cells to create more cells. For example, where we have our number of members for each house, we could potentially add another column or a few more cells to accommodate the number of females and the number of males. To do this, select the section where you would like to split your cells, then select the Layout tab again and select Split Cells. I would like two columns, one for male and one for female, and I'm going to keep the number of rows as four. Just note that here you'll need to deselect the merge cells before split. If you don't th do this, the data will be moved out of the current cells. Then select OK. Now you can go type in your headings. You could split it males and females, and then you can change your table accordingly. You'll notice that we have two tables here, or two sections of work rather. One is the details of houses for the high school, and the second is the one for the primary school. You can split your tables by selecting where you would like the split to appear, and then selecting your layout tab again, and then selecting split table. This will create some white space between the two tables. To change the cell sizes, row heights and column widths, select your table or click somewhere in your table. This will allow you to access your table tools again. Select the Layout tab. Once again, it's very important to note the position of your cursor as this will determine which column or which row you're going to alter. Let's have a look at the cell size section. Firstly, you've got your row height section. You can change the row height of each row individually by using the spinners or by typing in the correct measurement. Or if you want to do more than one row at a time, highlight your selection and then go make the change to your settings. Let's make them all 1.5. In the same way, you can change the column width. I'm going to click in the second column, and you'll see that the current width is 3.69. I'm going to make it slightly wider. You'll see that we'll actually start moving out the columns on the right-hand side of your table. So just be aware of settings like this, and make sure that your table actually is still easy to read once you've done all these settings. Let's have a look at the second table. You'll notice that the rows are not evenly distributed. You can actually do this by highlighting your table and then going to your Layout tab. Next to your row height and column widths, you'll see two buttons. The first one is to distribute your rows evenly and the second one is to distribute the width of your columns equally. I'm going to use the first one to distribute the height of the selected rows equally between them. Right, you'll see that the second or the last row has now moved down to the second page, or the two last rows have moved down to the second page. That isn't a problem. Just note now that the heights of the rows are exactly the same. You can also use the auto fit selection to automatically fit your contents or to also fit to the window that you're working in, or to use a fixed column width that you can set. And that concludes our lesson on Microsoft Word 2010, Resizing Parts of Tables.